motives and principles therefrom. It is, it is uh, Psalm 78 and the last verse of Psalm 78. And it is this. I'm giving it to you, no cost. Psalm 78 and verse 72 says this. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and he guided them by the skillfulness of his hand. Now if you're like me, you would summarize the verse. He who, it was speaking to none other than David, one of the greatest leaders of ancient Israel. And he's picking out two of his greatest leadership qualities. One was integrity. Two, the other leadership is a heart attitude or a attitude of the heart. You can't lead people without having a heart. A heart that is compassionate, loving, caring, sensitive. A heart that reaches out to people of all sorts. Whether you like them or you don't like them, you are commanded to have a decent heart attitude towards them. Now we won't get into it. And he guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. Another attitude of a true leader is the skillfulness of his hands. No lazy person can be a true leader. You can't sit in your ivory tower or castle and give commands and expect people to carry out those commands. It was said that no matter his politics, one of the greatest leaders of all times was Fidel Castro. It was not his politics or his philosophy that made him great. It was his example of leadership. He would grab a machete and he would go into the cane fields and he would cut the same amount of bundles of cane each day as the average worker would cut. By that he motivated them, he stimulated them, he enhanced them, he mobilized them, he motivated them, he encouraged them. As a leader he was no better than his people. Leaders must get in the trenches, get soiled, get dirty. Because the greatest way to motivate a people, to encourage a people, is to let them see you doing what you desire of them. Very good. You can't just stay guarded and protected by the secret services. No, you must be out there with the people. Psalm 78 and verse 72 is showing us some leadership quality of what made the man David great. Notice, as a leader, one of his first responsibility was to feed. He fed them, meaning the people, the masses, according to the integrity of his heart. Now the word integrity comes from the word Integra. One of the best motor cars came out of Japan was called an Integra. Many years ago it was one of the most favorite automobile to have. It was classy, it was sophisticated, it was costly. But they named it Integra from integrity. And it simply means integrity. To be above the rest. 
to do above and beyond that which you would require others to do in Tigra. It also means without duplicity. Some people, they have two face, two mouths, two sides. But integrity means without duplicity. A true leader must be without hypocrisy, double-mindedness. Speaking out of two sides of their mouths, or they have two face. But when we came from, it says, some people who are hypocritical, they're like a pania machete, a Spanish machete that cuts back and front. Hmm? Cut back and front without changing it. You cut going this way, and you cut coming back this way. Now, the leader David, a man after God's own heart, he led in such an exemplary way that he fed them and led them through the integrity of his heart, integra, without duplicity. Straightforward, one way. Simeon, come live with me, is the same thing. You wouldn't be surprised. I'm not one person in church and another person at home. And if you want to really know who I am, Sister Matthews, check my children and my wife. If I am up here ministering and I can't look down there at her, on them, in her face, something kind of wrong. Yeah. Because deeply, I would be pontificating here and she would give me one look that would disarm me, immobilize me. Not true. And women are good at that. <laughs> Some men would look up and say, wait till we go home and give her the love look. But she would look at the man and say, hmm, hypocrite. Because there's a bond. Whether it is unofficial or artificial, our first church is really our family. And our first member is our wife. And the others our children. They know everything going on. But David fed them. Say he fed them. He fed them. With the integrity of his heart. Leadership is a heart attitude. We lead from the heart. And it is not the little thing that pumps the blood to the left of our human anatomy. We go along. His heart. That's why God could say in his word, he was a man after his own. And then he would guide, he would lead, he would direct, he would instruct the people based on the skillfulness of his hand. Did you know that Proverbs says, any man that you see always walking around with his hand in his pocket will tend to poverty? If you're looking, ladies, a good man, take it from me, 62 years old, look one whose hand is never buried in his pocket. He will always be a Brutus or a Titus. Because the hand represents labor, work, activity. Are you with me? Because it brings discipline and it provides labor to generate income and to generate food. That's what Proverbs says. Any man that has his hand in his pocket always tended towards what? Poverty. Sweet boy, nice boy. Always a clean up your finger, conscious, and run their hands in their hair. There's nothing wrong in running your hand in your hair and keeping your beard and your mustache and your hair well groomed and so forth. But if they're always picking bumps, you kind of look on them more than once, you know. And kind of look kind of effeminate. 
You have your ask no question, not true. Yeah. But you must be willing to get your hands what? Dirty. 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 Mm? And I don't mean that you're an agriculturalist that is always in the yard digging up dirt. If you're a high tech person, then obviously your hands ought to be engaged, engaged become involved. But that was David. Now, if you were to judge political leadership, earthly leadership, and some of the leaders that we have today, my God, they would disqualify themselves from leadership, God kind of leadership. Are you with me? I am saying this because in the era of COVID-19, we need the greatest thing prophet, you just prophesied, that we need is a certain type of leadership that has content, substance, depth, quality, mm? weightiness, stability. Leaders need to come out of the house of God knowing that we are God's people and we need what? Encouragement. We need nourishment. We need stability. We need healing. We need blessing. We need direction. We need guidance. We need what? Leadership. People are hurting. People are losing their jobs. I don't know. All their savings have run out or is running out. People need to have creative ability to generate will to keep their family sustained, maintained, and going on. Not true. Yeah. I lift my hands to the women that some of us have. Because do you know that most men borrow from their wives? <laughs> and you know what they lend us from? What we give to them. Some big stone, some lump in my head, and they don't pay about <laughs> Yes, my wife let me sign promissory note. But when me let her, she said, I think you with money. <laughs> but my money that you give me and I have to lend you back from it, it's my money. The whole life. Nothing. I then see it when they pick the them sometimes. The ice cream money, the lunch money, the extra money. In my days, my grandparents used to put up their money in their shed pond or in their bosom. You don't go into them places that easily. There's no road map to that. But today, say today, today. God's people comes to his house to be fed, nourished, and encourage. Let me let me just rest Psalm 78 there for a while. Earlier I was looking at why did Jesus in St. John chapter 17 said to Peter these words. Come quickly with me to St. John 19. St. John 19. Talking about leadership. Art attitude. And here's another quality of leadership we're going to find in St. John 19. It is the word love. Say with me, love. 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 Not fake love. Not sloppy agape. Unconditional love. Unconditional. Sacrificial love. Quickly, St. John, are you there? St. John chapter 19 Jesus is having a discussion with one of his choicest disciples, and it is John. Come with me, rather, to St. John chapter 21, verses 15 and 17. 15 and 17. Are you at chapter 21? Yes. 15, what does verse 15 say? Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Jesus is the questioner. He's asking Peter a series of questions, but he keeps repeating himself in the process. Here's the question. So when they had dined, Jesus provided a meal for them, fish and bread. Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon, and he called him by his first name, Simon, son of Jonah, Jonah is your father, make no mistake about it. Do you love me more than these? We're going to define the these. But to come to service in God's army, to be a leader alongside Jesus, you must have a defining characteristic about you. You must be able to love, say love. love. Jesus, more than these. These represent the whatever in your life. The man, the woman, the house, the car, the face shell, the foot shell, the nose shell. You must love Jesus more than these. He continued. He said unto him, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Okay, the proof of your love, the test of your love, Peter, feed my lambs. I find this very interesting. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, prove it. And Jesus backed him up again and asked him the same question over and over again. And Peter was becoming a little bit frustrated. And so here he goes. And he said unto him the second time, verse 16, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed my... He shift the commandment this time. He said, feed, thank you, feed my, see, that, that's a good woman. That's why I married her 24 years ago. She knows when my face needs, my brow need mopping. Okay, good, she just did that. She had only lend me money. I hope that when I'm going home, I will need a bar as well. Pray for me as I pray for myself. But he says, firstly, lovest thou me more than these? And he said, yes, Lord, you know. And he said, okay. If you do love me, love needs an action. Jennifer always said it's better felt than kept. If you love me, show me. Cook a breakfast for me every now and again. She will ask me, lazy uh, Marlene, peel some banana. When she was getting pregnant, all by herself, I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> she had certain craving of it, and it was for green banana. That did not offend me, but the craving came in the midnight when sleep was tight. And we had some banana trees at the back of the yard. And the red dirt in Red Hill, in uh, Stony Hill, you are stained when you go out there. Sometimes rain or fall, and I go up there and cut in the dark field and cut a hand. I Woman come with a cost. My only challenge was I would go out, cut the banana, come in, peel the banana, and rub it cook the banana porridge, go back in the room, and that craving was lifted. <laughs> I don't want it again. Man, I felt like speaking in tongues. And I often do, in order not to curse. I felt words at the tip of my tongue, but I had to push it back and remind myself, you say you're a child of God. Fast asleep, no longer need it again. You've never been there. I have. The test of your love, the proof of your love. So he said to Peter, Peter, if you love me, 
feed my sheep. Two, teacher, if you love me, the second time and the third time, feed my feed my two sets of feeding from the one pot. Do you know how to cook three types of rice in one pot? My father taught me. There are some of us who like it slightly burnt towards the bottom. We call it the bun bun. Some of us are crazy about bun bun. Some of you are not. In the middle now, nicely steamed and a little bit softer than the bottom and a little bit softer than the top. The top is a shelly rice. We call it Chinese rice. Right? Three type of rice in one pot. If you're a good cook, you must be able to cook three types of rice in one pot. Shelly at the top, a little bit more moist in the middle and not gone up not burnt offering, not burnt sacrifice, but a little bit drier, slightly burnt at the bottom. Hmm? Jesus said to Peter, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? Feed my lamb, feed my sheep. The biggest story is Peter denied him three times. No, I don't know him. Expletives. No, I don't know him. Expletive. No, I don't know him. Expletive. And for those three denials, Jesus reinstated him. Lovest thou me? Yes. Lovest thou me? Yes. Lovest thou me? With love, he overcame those three denials. But I'm taking us somewhere. Then I want to close. The lamb represents the young ones who cannot decipher bones. You know, you can't put bones in baby's food. You would pick it out and prepare it and pick it up and make certain that nothing would be in it that would choke the baby, that would stifle the baby. Lambs are young sheep, young Christian, young converts that you need to be careful and delicate with them. How you feed them. They can't eat meat yet. They don't have teeth. But their gum is dangerous if a baby catch you with their gum, you know. It will make you cry. But you must understand that they don't have the nice tooth yet just to deal with hardened stuff. And then the sheep needs a little bit more firmer substance. They can deal beyond milk. They are meat Christians. You can leave them with their plate of food with what? Meat. They can negotiate bones. You're going to have all of these in the congregation. See to it that when you prepare the food for them, you are cognizant and conscious of your audience. Don't flatter them. Don't give them flattery. Don't flirtate with them. Nourish and encourage them. So a leader's first responsibility to his or her people is to be able to what? Feed, nourish, encourage them. I say this to you because a lot of what happens sometimes in church, we beat up, we batter, we bruise, they're over their heads. But Jesus said it this way, and I want to take us there. Hold on to John 19, and turn with me to Ezekiel 34. We didn't plan to deal with leadership today. But you must know what you're looking. You must know what you need. You must know what you're lacking. Hmm? To be nourished, to be encouraged, to be built up, to be sustained, maintained. Ezekiel 34, and I'll be done soon. It is one entire chapter, Ezekiel 34, on 
shepherded, shepherdship, shepherded, very important. God is speaking through Ezekiel, and he says, 34 verse 1, And the Lord, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. The shepherds of Israel were naughty, disqualified. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Pura, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do not feed, sorry, that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? What? Their priority is to feed the flock first. But we have a set of shepherds that they only feed God is talking to you. He knows what is happening. He said, he eat the fat. And you close yourself with the best type of clothing, wool. And you kill them that are fed. But you feed not the flock. You have the best type of meat for yourself. And you are clothed with the best type of of clothing, royalty, purple. But you treat my flock with disdain. He says, the disease have ye not strengthened, and neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up the broken, the wounded, the afflicted. Hmm? Neither have he brought again that which was driven away. They are lost. They are scattered. Neither have he sought that which was lost. Remember Jesus' parable of the ninety and nine and the one? How we went in search for him? That's the heart. Do you know that a shepherd daily exposes himself to dangers? the slippery slopes of the hill, that if they fall into that descent 30 feet down, they would never be found again. And they do that every day if it does require to go in search of one sheep, one lamb. Oh, if we were to teach Psalm 23, why he wear three coats, one to warm his own body, the second one to rock the newly born lamb in. And the third, a double security of both of them. So the shepherd always smell like the mm -hmm. He's wrapped up with the sheep. The sheep is wrapped up with him. In the winter night, in order to keep them warm, it is his body heat. So they warm him with their bodies. And he warned them with this. God is looking down and he says, listen, you have not gone to the store. Neither have you sought him which was lost. And with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. Underline the word rule. The word rule is to lead, is to guide. With cruelty, insensitivity. Verse 5. And they were what? Scattered. Because there is no shepherd. Where there is no shepherd, or smite the shepherd and the flock will what? Scatter. You and I know that every piece of instrument that the shepherd has, the shepherd's sling, the shepherd's rod, the shepherd's staff, they are to what? Comfort the flock daily. The rod is like a boomerang. The head is round, and if properly thrown, it can be a missile in the air. The staff has a pointed end that sticks in the ground, and it is said sheep are considered to be the stupidest of all of God's creature. And if the shepherd puts his rod in the ground and leave it there for five days, the flock will remain there because the staff, that's why the rod is so important. What is in your hand? Yeah. The rod is for the exercise of authority and leadership. 
and shepherd's ministry. Stretch it across the Red Sea. Stretch it across the Jordan. That's why we must be guided and be governed by the shepherd's rod. If not, we are astray and fight danger. Verse 6. My sheep wander throughout all the mountains and upon every high hill because they have no shepherd. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search and seek after them. Verse 7. Therefore, the shepherd hear the word of the Lord. Shepherds must hear first the word. If not, we have no word to bring to the flock. Verse 8. As I live, said the Lord, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock. But the shepherd fed themselves and fed not the flock. The shepherd's first responsibility is to? Have you ever watched a mother, a feeding mother? When she makes the bottle of feed, what does she do first? She tastes it or put it on her hand. If the temperature can fit her hand, it means it won't burn up the baby. And sometimes she even pours some of her own breast milk hmm? in the bottle so that the youngster is what? Fed. It is the same spiritual principle. Why am I saying this? Because do you know how much millions of God's children flock in the earth today, in our nation today, now, many of us as shepherds and leaders have become a fat off of the people. Isn't it true? We drive the best, live in the best neighborhood. We're the best. But where does it come from? Poor people. They love their pastor. They want to see their pastor look good. But some of us abuse it. Take them for a ride. Is it not so? They give everything in church. And then they go home and what? They fast and pray. They are hungry. Some people are true givers that way. Saw, I mean, Ezekiel 34 is the shepherd rebuked from God. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them anymore. Can I share something with you? The shepherd drink the milk from the sheep. Did you know that? The shepherd occasionally, to spare his own life, will eat one of the lambs in order to stay alive. They only kill in order to preserve life. But we kill every day, some of us, because we neglect the flock. Verse 11, For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them. And quickly, verse 22, Therefore I will save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over another. And be, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. God saw David as a what? A shepherd. He was the shepherd of shepherd. His quality, his characteristics, his personality. He shall feed them, and they shall be, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be, will hear. I will be their God, and my servant David a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. I want to give you these closing verse in the interest of time. Verse 29. And I will raise up for them a plant renowned, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the evil anymore. Thus shall they know that I am the Lord their God, and I am with them, and 
that they, even the house of Israel, God called the whole nation a country. And God's example of leadership is shepherd leadership. God has three types of leadership. Steward leadership, shepherd leadership, and servant leadership over the entire country. I'm exposing the type of political and economic leadership that we have today. Are they resembling leaders of God's own heart? Do they create internal strife amongst their own people? Do they have blue state and red state? Do they have color green or color orange? Are they partisan? Do they divide the nation into two or three? Or do they unite the nation under God? What should we look for when we choose as Christians? Should it be men and women of integrity, morality, ethical standard, spiritual leadership? Talk the truth. If that is true, all of our churches will be empty of internal political adherence. Is it not so? During election time, it is one of the most divisive time in any church because that's when you know the true colors that rules and reign. In America today, you will see some strange things between now and the 3rd of November. Is it one America? Is it a Donald Trump's America? Or is it a Biden America? Or does America belong to God and to no man? He said it this way, Thus said the Lord, They know that I am the Lord their God. I am with them. And that even the house of Israel are my people, said the Lord. Verse 31. And ye my flock, the flock of my posture, are men, and I am your God, said the Lord. I want to close with this. I have to do it. Wherever my voice is heard in this nation, people talk about moral equivalence. Or choose this leader because he's a little bit more righteous than this leader. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. But the church should be able to say moral equivalence is not spiritual morality. Jesus said it this way. You may, you may kick me, you may hit me, but the church must tell the truth. Man's leadership does not measure up to God. This is what Jesus said. Matthew 9, Matthew 9, I'm closing with this, definitely. Matthew 9, listen to it. Verse 35, Matthew 9. And Jesus went about. Yes, he went about. Where did he went about? Talk to me. In all their cities, in all their villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sick, every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted, they were weary, they were scattered. They are describing Israel in the time of Jesus. He said he saw them fainted, hmm? scared, weary. And he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted, scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Isn't it the same thing we just read in Ezekiel 34? That's how Jesus saw them. I wonder if you were to come to Jamaica, how would he see Jamaica? today with so many bishops and archbishops and doctors and apostles and ambassadors we have more titles than we have names to put them on hmm? we have more degrees than they are thermometers but God's people is still not represented they are hungry they are not fed they are starving then said he to his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are 
pray ye therefore. To who? The Lord of the harvest. Aren't you glad that man, the harvest doesn't belong to man? Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. We came from Psalm 78, verse 72. And he showed us that David led them through the integrity of his heart and through the skillfulness, the discipline of his hands. Nothing was too good for him to do above the people. He went in the trenches and he said in Psalm Ezekiel 34 that he would raise up a shepherd after his own heart. Who do you think he was talking to? The fulfillment was Jesus the Christ. The root of De Jesse, the seed of Jesse. Are you with me? There are too many people that are in church for money, a business, and they give bad reputation and integrity to the true ones. Are you with me? But how do we discern the real from the unreal, the vile from the unvile, the heart, integrity, the hands? They are not to smite and to beat down into the ground. They are to speak words of life and restoration. That's why I said based on what people are going through today in our church during the period of COVID, stand with me. They need encouragement. They need healing. They need deliverance. They need leading, guidance, mm -hmm. encouragement, strengthening. They may need to be maintained and to be sustained. A lot of people can't even come out. They are hungry. They are fearful. They are going through. You can't judge them. You have to call them up, pray with them, encourage them, visit them. Their loved ones are dying too. They are hungry. Who hears the cries of the children? Who hears the cries of the lonely, the oppressed, the depressed? All I'm saying today, we need to know each other. We belong to each other. We're one family. We're responsible for one another. Don't let the enemy tempt you to stay away. To think ill or evil of each other. Find out where each other are located. Pray one for the other. Pray for the marriages in the church, the families, the women, the single women. Pray that God would keep them, sustain them. They do fight battles in their flesh too. Battles in their minds. Don't judge them. Pray for the men. They are tempted in all points as he was and as we are. But pray for one another. Love each other. Hmm? I encourage you. Leadership encompasses all of this. Find out if somebody is hungry. If they have it. Bless somebody. Not because you think that they don't they look like they don't need it. No. You'll never know why God put it on your heart to be a blessing to that person, to that individual. Let us be more sensitive and compassionate one towards another. As we pray ourselves out of here today. Leadership is first followership. It's not the mic, it's not the public. It's having a heart of compassion, sympathy, love. Ask God, touch me today, Lord. Help me to be more sensitive, to be more aware of my brothers and sisters' plight, to call them up occasionally, to give a hope that would heal to give a love that would restore, an embrace that would assure. When we come to church every Sunday morning, you don't know what Tom is going through, what Ari has been through throughout the course of the week. But just how you greet them, how you respond to them, how you investigate about their needs can be a source of healing. You don't know why my sister is here today. But the Spirit of God has led her. Reach out to somebody today. We're about to close. Yes, I love you with a love 
of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see in you all the glories of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Let's sing it once again. Oh, yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. My brother, my sister, I can see in you all the glories of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Just one more time for somebody that needed today. Yes, I love you of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord, for I can see, I can see in you, all the glories of my King, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Father, I just come before you today. And I repent on behalf of every brutish shepherd who speaks insensitively to the flock, who feeds themselves the best and give the bones to your flock as dogs under the table. We repent, O oh God. That we wouldn't be found by you in breach as a shepherd. We repent on behalf of all the brutish ones and all those sheep, members of the flock that is wounded, that is diseased, that is lost, that is scattered. Oh God, we pray today. Hear our prayers. For those of us who have abused others under our care. Because we sense that they are somewhat more anointed than we are. When we have to love them and to care for them and to nourish and to encourage them. We have pushed them down. Lord, forgive us. For bringing lame sacrifices before you in our times of worship. We buy the cheaper doves and rams and goats in the marketplace. Those that are mange and are filled with sore. And we burn before you as a burnt offering and sacrifice. What we wouldn't for ourselves. Father, we ask that you heal the body of Christ in Jamaica today. Father, we beg you that those that you are raising up as true shepherds of your people would not be suppressed by others. Father, we ask that you would heal your body by first healing the shepherds among us. Give us a shepherd's heart for your people. A shepherd's heart of compassion, of love, forgiveness, of mercy, of grace, that we would not compromise or condone with sin of any sort. Lord, we come before you. Remember our leadership here. Remember our followership here. Remember our membership here. Oh God, people are hurting and are seeking a place of refuge. Help us that we would be a city of refuge where those who are guilty 
of accidental murders, accidental crimes could come to your city of refuge. And the law of God could take its course and, and, and they would feel restored and forgiven. Oh God, let your churches become cities of refuge. Let us not judge people. Oh God. But you judge them. Let us, them not be weary and scattered like a flock without a shepherd. Remember the flocks that are without shepherd and the shepherds that are scattered. Raise them up again, oh God. Lift the judgment from your body. Spirit of God, hear our tears, our cries, and are reaching up and out to you. Bond us together as one family under God, where everyone is cared for and thought about with respect and integrity of heart and the loving care of the hand. We bring our membership before you. We bring our followership before you. In Jamaica, heal our church. Heal the brutish shepherds and bishops and prophets in our land. Hear the cries of those that are silenced, but they have a word and a heart of compassion for your people. We bow before you today and we ask for hearts of integrity, hands of faithfulness and loyalty. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let your word go loud and clear and far and near as you heal the body. Again we pray. In Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name come on in Jesus name we bow and repent before you and we give you praise and glory and the people of God say yes I love you with the love Lord, yes, I love you with a love. For I can see in you and see in you, yeah, all the glories. And I, with the love of the Lord, just one more as. As we go out of here, yes, I I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Wait. Oh, I can see in you the glory of my King. I love you with the love of the Lord. Peter, Peter, lovest thou me? Feed my lambs. Peter, Peter, lovest thou me? Feed my sheep. May that be our marching orders today. You don't have to be a pastor to love the brethren. And I don't have to be anything at all but one who is desirous of reflecting Jesus as my King. God bless you. Raise your hand. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord grant you his shallow. Amen. Is that your sister? Um, is that your sister? Yes. The one that is pregnant? She hasn't had the baby yet? Amen. We claim you and the baby for this house. And no evil, no harm may come to you, nor to your child. But we cover you under the blood of Jesus Christ. Now and forevermore. Say amen. Amen. My sis, we love you. What's your name? Janelle? 